okay, I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable with you and let you know that I'm, I'm not a banker, I'm not an economist, I'm, I'm not a mortgage broker, I'm probably not even one of the top five smartest people I know, but with some help from people smarter than I am, I've made some pretty cool spreadsheets and with those spreadsheets, you know, it looks like I've got some pretty good data that might be able to give me some, some insights as to what might be happening in the next six, 12 months or so. Can't get, make any guarantees, but what I think that I'm seeing may help buyers and sellers be a little bit more prepared in the next six, 12 months with, with a changing market that we might be seeing. And the beauty part about it is, if I'm wrong, buyers and sellers are still gonna show up and be more prepared to deal with a potentially different market than we've ever seen before. What are the downsides of that? I, I can't think of any. Yeah, I, I don't know of any downsides of being better prepared, either financially or you know, in, in terms of maintenance on your home to either buy or sell a house. I can only think of one way to, to really lose moving forward in this market, and that's to, to not prepare at all, to completely ignore absolutely everything and anything that I'm about to say or anyone else is about to say about what our market's looking like. That's a, that's a way you could fail. You could definitely lose that way. You could also lose if you just squandered everything that you, that you were earning over the next 6 to 12 months. That would, that would help you lose. But paying attention to this information and maybe applying some of it or even just listening to it may potentially help you. So let's get into it. Oh, also, if um, if I if you hear me say anything that's incorrect, nail me in the comments because um, I'm a sucker for I, I don't want to be incorrect. So if if you can help me learn something new, I absolutely want to learn something new. So yeah, tell me down in the comments if I've if I've made a comment that's incorrect. If I've said something that needs to be cleared up. Um, absolutely let me know and if there are any co anything that i say that you want some more information on definitely hit that in the comments too uh, i'm working on getting a one of our local lenders to to sit down so that way we can have some more conversations about just these topics or these topics and, and others um, so we can get a lot more information so that way we can make you know buyers and sellers in fairbanks that much more aware of what's going on in the rest of the world so we can make really good decisions on, on pricing buying and selling so Stay tuned, let's get into this. The way I see it, everything on its own looks pretty happy and healthy and, and we're seeing a lot of the seasonality that we should expect to see with our market. I mean, if you're a seller and you've been kind of considering getting your home on the market and you've been holding off because you've been waiting to see or waiting for a market correction, like a lot of sellers have been, we might be seeing it here in, in the future. We've, we've already seen some slight increases in, in sold prices in both Fairbanks and North Pole. We've got the, the graphs you know, to show it to you here, uh, which is nice to see again, especially as, as a homeowner. That's great. But that being said, when you look at how our market's being affected by the consumer price index and all funds rate, all these other things, you may want to pay attention to the rest of the world too, because all of our market trend data is great, but it only helps us see one part of the whole picture. So let's take a look at what the, you know, the consumer price index is, the federal funds rate, and how all of these other things really get into it. So the consumer price index measures the average change or price over time of a list or index of consumer goods and services. And the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics releases this report and measures all of these, you know, the, the changes of the price of these goods and services. Um, in order to, to calculate the, the consumer price index to measure the rate of inflation. It's not necessarily measuring inflation itself, but how quickly inflation is rising and falling. And what this does is it, it's a 12 month look back. So it's looking back at this index of the change in price of these goods and services, right? 12 months, if we look back 12 months from today, we would be looking back into you know, June of 2022. Well, over the past 12 months, or I'm sorry, over the past couple of months, we've seen some of the, the highest figures within this index fall off. So in May and June of 2022, um, 
the when when the Bureau of Labor Statistics was measuring all of these goods and services and the change in the price, there was huge increases in these in these prices in May and June of 2022. And because of these huge increases, the Bureau of Labor Statistics made a recommendation to increase the federal funds rate. And when all that happened, the consumers, as you may remember, as you start as you are still feeling, have felt the huge pinch of you know, the increase in price on consumer goods. Again, everything from food to cars to rent. I mean, it's it's been everything. So the prices on everything have, have risen over the past year or so, uh, probably longer than that. I mean, you, you, everyone's felt, felt the pinch. And for homeowners, especially over the past 12 months, we've absolutely felt it too. And if you've been buying or selling homes or buying, trying to buy or sell a home, you may have felt the, the pinch in, in your mortgage interest rates in that we saw a huge rise in those interest rates at around the same time. So while the federal funds rate and mortgage interest rates are not exactly the same thing, sometimes when we see the federal funds rate rise, we also see a rise in mortgage interest rates. Um, they're not exactly linked and we can talk about all that in, an, in another video because it's pretty convoluted how all of that stuff works and I'm not an expert on that by any stretch of the imagination. What the result of the federal funds rate and rising and the result of mortgage interest rates rising on consumers tends to be pretty close to the same thing. It ends up being a squeeze on consumers' pocketbooks. When we get back, sorry for this kind of really long explanation, when we get back to where we are currently over the past couple months, like I said, these these hard months, May and June of 2022, the highest months of the rise of inflation that has been seen, you know, in, in recorded history recently, have fallen off of this consumer price index. So when the Bureau of Labor Statistics has released this index, it released this report to the Federal Fund or to the Federal Reserve recently. They said, well, wait a second, things look like inflation may not be rising as fast. So if that's the case, maybe we can just put a halt on the increase of the federal funds rate, which is what they've done. So we've we've been sitting at a, a, a stable federal funds rate for you know the past couple of weeks. Now that doesn't mean that mortgage interest rates are dropping or mortgage interest rates are you know going to be dropping in the near future. What it does mean is that the federal funds rate is not increasing currently. If we continue to see a reduction in the rise of inflation, then we may in the future, in the next six, 12 you know, plus months, we may see a reduction or a continued halting of the federal funds rate. And if when that happens, we may see a reduction or a continued halting of the federal funds rate that might be a little bit of relief for for consumers which could end up producing more money in pockets increasing consumer spending power increasing consumers ability to borrow and if that does happen it could put consumers in a position where they are better equipped to be able to buy a home again so if there are folks out there that are thinking hey I might like to buy a home in the next six to 12 months or so. Now might be the time to start being prepared or getting prepared to be, get your credit, get your financial picture in the situation where you can take advantage of that time if when it comes. Like I said, if I'm wrong, if you start working on credit repair now and in six months we're in the same situation, then your credit is already repaired anyway. But if we're in the situation where in six months we do see some reduction in mortgage interest rates and you've fixed your credit anyway, then you're able to take advantage of this in a, an even better way. And that would just be gangbusters. So if you're a buyer, you know, think about this because this might be the like, hey, you know, now's the time to invest. Like here's the insider information that you're looking for. Maybe, not, maybe it is, maybe it's not, but if I'm wrong, you're still gonna be in a better situation than you were if you were prepared now.
So keep in mind that this, this, what I'm saying doesn't mean that inflation itself is dropping, but just that the rate at which inflation is rising may have slowed for, for the second month in a row. This is a good sign for the country. It's a really great sign for buyers and sellers. If this continues, the Federal Reserve may make a recommendation for or to give consumers some, some relief in the reduction of the federal funds rate. I know that the federal funds rate and mortgage interest rates are, are not exactly the same thing. So to say that a halt or even a reduction in the federal funds rate um, equals a reduction in, in mortgage interest rates would, would probably get me a lot of comments uh, from lenders all over the place saying, no, -uh. and I get it because they, they aren't exactly the same thing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't achieve, achieve the same ends, if that makes sense. Consider this, a, a reduction in the federal funds rate reduces the financial squeeze on consumers' overall ability to save and borrow money eventually. Um, so if consumers as a whole have more money in their pockets, they're in a situation in which they have the ability to increase their spending and their borrowing in the future. So when the Federal Reserve made the decision to halt the increase of the federal funds rate, it may have been signaling, may have being the operative phrase here, um, some relief in sight down the road. Not right now, but maybe down the road. And that's the important thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm not talking about relief necessarily right now. I'm not talking about even savings right now. And I'm not talking about even going out and getting pre-approved for a home loan right now. Um, as painful as that is to say as, as a realtor. <laughs> I want everybody to get pre-approved so everybody can try to go out and buy a house right now. What I am saying is that it's it's time to start paying attention to the rest of the world and or to the rest of the world around you because there are more things going on than just how our local market is being affected by um, all of the homes that are coming and going you know as they as they move and shake knowing how knowing how things are working um, locally is great because it's a really good idea on on pricing homes and and being able to price responsibly but knowing what's coming next in terms of our national economy gives buyers a much better idea of how and when to buy for instance if i was a buyer which i i am i'm always a buyer if i was thinking about buying real estate in in north pole or fairbanks in the next three six months or so knowing that mortgage rates have been relatively flat for the last six months and that the federal reserve has halted the rise of the fed or the federal funds rate is really important this gives me the idea that in theory my dollar may be able to go a little bit further in the next few months so if I were looking for signs at the bottom of a market, we might be seeing it right now. This might be the lowest that home prices might be very soon. Because if I remember anything about when, when mortgage rates dropped before, if they do drop again, when they dropped before, home prices increased pretty dramatically. So if, if I was a buyer waiting for interest rates to drop again, when they drop, home prices are just gonna increase. So it doesn't make much sense to wait for the drop because everything's just gonna get more expensive when things get more affordable. And if you need some help with doing that math, I'd be happy to do it for you. Just let me know, drop, drop, me, a, drop me a message in the comments and we can talk all about it. Again, if I was looking for signs of the bottom of the market, this might be it. And if we do see a reduction in mortgage interest rates in the next six to 12 months, being prepared to take advantage of it by starting right now to get my ducks in a row would be one of the smartest decisions that you could make. It could put you and your family in a situation where you could actually be able to buy a home when the time is right. And it's a good thing someone's letting you know about it, right? If you'd like to have more information about how you can get prepared, you can absolutely check out this video on why we recommend working with a local lender. Um, it absolutely gets you on the right path. Take a look at this link. We'll get you hooked up. So far, we've talked a little bit about where the market might be coming in terms of the federal funds rate, mortgage rates, the consumer price index for buyers, but how does this affect sellers? Well, let's let's talk about that too, because it might sound like it's all you know gumdrops and roses with mortgage interest rates dropping and all these buyers being able to suddenly afford homes because that was awesome last time, but there's some things that we need to talk about here. So let's get into this. We're gonna go back 2020, 2021, 2022. 
We're going to travel back in time in our heads. We're going to remember what it was like to be a buyer during this time. Um, interest rates were down so super low because that's that's what and I didn't talk about this before. But that's part of what the you know the Federal Reserve was doing as a means to keep our our market or our economy from tanking. They needed to pump what what money consumers had back into the market in order to keep it moving. So they dropped interest rates across the board for everything and made it so attractive to to borrow in order to keep everything going. Right? At least that's what they told us, right? So if we consider that and consider the mindset the buyers were in when when we were buyers in 2020, 2021, 2022, we can also remember that because everyone was buying, it increased the competition dramatically. Everything was being sold at, you know, with competing offers. So our buyers were writing these ridiculously high offers, well over asking and doing everything they could to get these homes. One of the big things that they were writing away were repairs. So a lot of buyers were taking homes as is, you know, get, maybe getting home inspections, but but not asking for repairs, you know, during the course of the, the transaction. As we think about this from the buyer's perspective, especially at that time, there's a lot going on. You know, we're moving up to Fairbanks, we're coming up to a new area. This is a really, really great place. And I've talked about it before too, you know, being in Alaska, especially in the summer, when it's summertime, especially if we've spent one or two winters here, when it's summertime, it's time to be outside. It's time to go out and do things. I don't want to be spending time at home, you know, tackling home maintenance items. Um, so chances are they're just not going to get done. And the problem with that is that we live in a pretty harsh environment and mother nature will absolutely capitalize on, ab on every deficiency that's out there. And so small items from three years ago on a home inspection report can turn into huge, huge problems today. And unfortunately, when we're writing an offer as a buyer and everything's moving and shaking, we're moving, we're trying to come up here where we've got all these different things because we're, we had a PCS up here. We've got report dates that we've got to work on all of this different stuff. And we're writing offers at the same time. And we're all so excited to get into this new home because this is the one we want. We've lost half a dozen homes because we, you know, we were competing offers and, you know, we didn't have cash. We're buying with a VA loan, all these different things. And we wrote away all these other things in terms of our offer. And now we are turning around in 2023 to sell our homes. Now we're, we're dealing with some pretty significant issues. Let's, let's keep talking about this. So unfortunately, like I said, when we're writing that offer and we're ready to do anything for that ho house, most folks aren't thinking about resale or even the potential problems that, that time and Alaska weather may bring to their home. And when we consider that th those same buyers that, that, that we were back in 2021, 22, were also financing homes with one or two, maybe as high as three or 4% interest rates, buyers today are not writing offers like they were then. Buyers aren't writing offers where they are taking homes as is. You know, they're worried that they're not going to get into a home. Um, they're being a little bit more choosy. They are walking away from homes if if homes have have really really negative home inspection reports and if they can't get repair items completed. It happens all the time. The buyers of today are not the buyers of yesterday, and unfortunately, this is something that we're seeing in in listings all day long. What is something that we can do to prevent something like this? Well, if you are thinking about getting your home on the market in the next six to 12 months or so, being prepared is worth its weight in gold. And as anyone that's been in Fairbanks for any time can know, gold is pretty important in Fairbanks. Um, one of the best ways to be prepared to get your home on the market is to get a pre-listing home inspection and getting a pre-listing home inspection now or even digging up your, your previous inspection from when you purchased could likely save you thousands of dollars when it's your time to sell. Not only that, but using the time that you have, if you have it, is well worth it as well. 
What you don't want to do is be working on the time to get repairs done by a contractor on the 45 to 60 day timeline of a real estate transaction in the summer in Fairbanks. Repairs just don't get done. And if they do, it won't be done for cheap. Relying upon <laughs> this 45 day window when we know in advance that we're going to be selling potentially next year where we can get repairs done now is pretty silly. It is much cheaper to get these repairs done now than it will be in 45 to 60 days next year when we're trying to pack it in with everybody else as we talked about in, the, in all of the other market trend reports that we've discussed today and um, all these other videos, that we've, so many other videos. So if you have the time, please use it. It will absolutely save you time and money and so many, so many headaches. If you're thinking about selling your home in the next six to 12 months, or if you even know somebody that might be thinking about selling their home in the next six to 12 months, send them this video, make sure, make sure it gets their way. Um, it could likely save them a lot of money when they sell their home. So the reason for all this is because it's the summer of 2023 and we're starting to see a lot of these homes from 2020 and 2021 already hitting the market again. And they bought at the lower end of a rising market, but we're negotiating away a lot. And I know this because Brandon and I were listing and selling hundreds of homes during those years. So if you purchased your home during that time and you want to come up with a good plan to be prepared or as prepared as you possibly can be to sell your home for the most amount of money with the least amount of pain and stress possible, give us a call 907-885-0316 or you can check us out. You can register on our website www.fbxhomesearch.com chirp. Have a great day. We'll see you later, Fairbanks.